Welcome back to Childhood Under Occupation, a podcast by Defence for Children International, Palestine. My name's Salson. In this episode, I speak with 17-year-old former child prisoner Majdi, who's been detained four times since he was 13, his mum, Sahad, and my colleague, Iyad Misk, a lawyer at DCI Palestine. Palestinian children in the occupied West Bank, like adults, face arrest, prosecution and imprisonment under an Israeli military detention system that denies them basic rights. Since 1967, Israel has operated two separate legal systems in the same territory. In the occupied West Bank, Israeli settlers are subject to the civilian and criminal legal system, whereas Palestinians live under military law. No Israeli child comes into contact with the military courts. Israel has the dubious distinction of being the only country in the world that automatically and systematically prosecutes children in military courts that lack fundamental fair trial rights and protections. Israel prosecutes between 500 and 700 Palestinian children in military courts each year. Since 2000, Israeli military authorities have detained, interrogated, prosecuted and imprisoned around 13,000 Palestinian children. One of these was Majdi. ماجد يا ماجد محمد زاقيق عمره 17 لما تقلت كان عمره 13 سنة My name is Majdi I'm 17 I was only 13 the first time I was arrested Israeli forces have arrested me four times in total The second time I was 16 and the third and fourth times I was 16 and a half I live in the village of Beit Umar in Hebron. Life in Beit Umar is okay, but there are continual clashes between Israeli forces and the village residents. When I was first detained, I was 13 and I was fast asleep. Israeli soldiers raided our house. A soldier woke me up and asked me my name. He said they'd come to arrest me. I was terrified. The soldiers then beat me, blindfolded me, and handcuffed me. They didn't even let me say goodbye to my family. The soldiers took me to Etzion Interrogation Center, where they interrogated me for four and a half hours before putting me into a prison cell. Eventually, they transferred me to Ofar prison. At seven in the morning, I was taken to a military court and made to wait. I waited all day until at around six in the evening, I was told that I had been released. Life in prison was very hard. Every time I was detained, I was held in prisons far from home, so I wasn't able to contact my family. I felt isolated. The second time I was arrested during Ramadan. The soldiers screamed at us all day long. They interrogated me for 18 days in a row. The interrogation was a harsh experience. On the first day, they interrogated me for around 12 hours. During the interrogation, they beat me up and threatened to bring my family to the facility. For the rest of the 18 days, they interrogated me for three to four hours each day. While in detention, we were allowed to study three subjects, maths, Arabic, and Hebrew. But the lessons were all for much younger children and weren't suitable for me. During my second detention, I was held in solitary confinement for almost a month and a half. The last time I was released from detention after three months, I was particularly happy because my sentence had been reduced, which I wasn't expecting. Each time I've been released, I've gone back to school straight away and been very happy to see my friends and teachers. But the last time, all of my classmates had already taken their exams. I want to finish my studies and study law at university. I want to defend children. I want us to have a bright future. It's not only children who are detained that suffer the consequences of Israel's practice of military detention, but also their families. We spoke to Majdi's mum, Sahad, to understand how she coped with Majdi's detention. As in the previous episode, my colleague, DCI Palestine Advocacy Officer Manara Lamla, is translating. 
والله أنا كان كنت عايش التجربة كمان مرة مع أخو نفس العمر تقريبا أخو كان 12 سنة ونص. Suhad managed to know about her child when he was detained through uh, the DCIP's lawyer Iyad Misk because he was uh, following up on his case and representing him in the uh, court. So since the beginning of uh, transferring him from the uh, police station to the um, to the detention center, she could know everything about him through the lawyer. She always has mixed feelings when they uh, when Majdi is released because she's happy to see her child again and not uh, imprisoned, but at the same time. Seeing him being arrested a couple of times, more than once, as well as his other siblings, it always gives her the feeling of anxiety and fear that they might come and, arresting, and arrest them, even in the same day. So she's always like happy, but not fully happy because she's always worried. What Suhad wishes for the future is to be along with her family happy, to see her children, and especially Majdi because he's in high school, graduated from high school and going to university, obtaining good education. She believes that the DCIP's work is very important and the follow-up of uh, Iyad Misk, the lawyer, was brilliant. Uh, he was following up on, on the cases of her children, not only Majdi, but the other child as well, when he was child, the other son. So she's very thankful for the work of the DCIP, especially for Mr. Iyad Misk. DCI Palestine provides free legal representation to Palestinian children charged in Israeli military courts. Our lawyer, Iyad Misk, represented Majdi. <laughs> When he was arrested, his family contacted DCIP and Iyad Misk started following up on his case. Iyad starts uh, representing children since the minute of their arrest until they are tried before the courts and given their sentence. He mentioned that uh, at the beginning, he communicates with the police in order to give legal consultation for the children before the interrogation and then follows up regularly on the case until they either get the sentence of the child or get him released on bail. The majority of these cases are accused of stone throwing and this was the first time Majdi was arrested for. He was accused uh, when because he was arrested for three times. Uh, the first time where he was accused of stone throwing and this is uh, pretty similar to the majority of the other of other children. What makes his case kind of special is that because he was arrested once, he's more vulnerable to getting arrested more and more. For example, whenever anything occurs in their village or their area, they come and arrest him. They arrested him another time, but they uh, released him because he wasn't accused of anything. And this, in Iyad's uh, opinion, uh, makes his case special that he's more vulnerable to uh, being arrested. Yeah, believes that um, in the first place, detaining and arresting a child is a violation by itself. Uh, adding to that, that he uh, the, the way he was arrested, how they raided their house, how they um, transferred him in the a military jeep, uh, how he was being abused during the transfer and during the arrest. And one big thing Iyad thinks is is also a big violation is that he was arrested in a very in, in, in a kind of isolated uh, prison it was near akka it was really uh, far away from any other prison so he was he was kind of isolated either from all prisoners or even from prisoners his age the israeli military detention system is no fit place for a child to be at any time but Majdi recently joined a more unfortunate cohort of child prisoners who were detained during a global pandemic. In 2020, we confirmed that at least three Palestinian child prisoners had tested positive for COVID-19 while in Israeli military detention. Our extensive documentation shows that children in this system live in close proximity, often in compromised sanitary conditions. They typically have little or no access to resources with which to maintain basic hygiene practices, including practices that reduce the spread of COVID-19. 
several Palestinian children detained since the outbreak told us that Israeli soldiers did not take precautionary measures to reduce the spread of the virus, and they didn't wear masks or gloves. The children were not medically examined or tested for COVID-19 upon arrival at Israeli facilities, and they were placed inside rooms, including with other children, that did not contain cleaning supplies, hand soap, or adequate ventilation. Something Israeli authorities did do during the pandemic, however, was to further prevent Palestinian child prisoners from contacting their families. Due to the uh, pandemic, the COVID-19, there was no actual uh, court sessions. They were all virtual uh, on the computer and he didn't meet his family during that period until he was transferred to the uh, prisons. Uh, there is, during the sessions, during the court, inside the court, there, is, there are no Arabs except for the uh, prisoners and their lawyers. All of these sessions are uh, built on orders from the commander of the area. Contrary to the to other courts in Israel that uh, follow the uh, civilian law. In 2020, we documented 79 Palestinian child detention cases from the West Bank that demonstrated widespread and institutionalized ill treatment. Nearly 85% of children told us they were physically abused by Israeli forces during the course of their detention. Every child detainee had their hands bound, and 68% had their legs shackled. 91% were blindfolded. The majority of children were arrested from their homes at night, and three quarters of children were not told why they were being detained. We also documented 27 cases where Israeli authorities held Palestinian children in solitary confinement for two days or more, a practice that amounts to torture or cruel, inhuman or degrading treatment. The longest period of isolation that DCI documented in 2020 was 32 days. Please join us again for a special immersive episode of Childhood Under Occupation, in which a former child prisoner who spent a prolonged period in isolation takes you on his journey into and out of solitary confinement. To find out more about our work on military detention, visit our website dci-palestine.org and subscribe to the podcast. Thanks for listening.